The mayfly belongs to one of the oldest orders of insects, the Ephemeroptera, with an evolutionary history dating back around 300 million years to the late Carboniferous period. There are around 50 species of Ephemeroptera in the UK and over 2,000 worldwide. Mayfly is a common generic term often used to describe any of these upwing flies. The mayfly as we know it gets its name from the fact that the adults originally emerged almost exclusively in the month of May. However, due to a discrepancy of 11 days caused by a change from the Julian to the Gregorian calendar, the mayfly emergence now spans the months of May and June. There are three different species of mayfly in the UK, but by far the most common is the ephemera danica, found on the Derbyshire Wye. The popular misconception is that the mayfly only lives for a couple of days, and while this may be true for the adult stages, this isn't the whole story. After hatching from the egg, the mayfly nymph is only just visible to the naked eye and will spend the next two years of its life burrowed into the riverbed, feeding on organic detritus and shedding its skin over 20 times, growing to over an inch in length before being ready to ascend to the surface. Many emerging mayfly imitations are tied clinkhammer style, with a body extending downward into the water. But in actual fact, the mayfly emerges flat on the surface of the water, with the nymphal shuck left trailing on the surface behind the newly emerged dun. The dun stage is unique among the insect world. No other order of insects has two different stages of winged adulthood. Upon emergence, duns are quite dull in colour, and the wings have a dull matte appearance due to a covering of fine hairs, thought to prevent the adhesion of water. The dun has no function in mouthparts and underdeveloped sex organs. The only reason for existing is to escape. Those that do escape, seek out the sanctuary of bankside vegetation, where within a matter of hours, they will reach full sexual maturity and undergo a final emergence from the dun skin to become glossy, longer-tailed spinners. Like the dun before it, the spinner has no function in mouthparts and relies solely on energy reserves stored up during the nymph stage to sustain it. With no need to feed and dwindling reserves of energy, time is of the essence for the spinners. With what seems like preternatural timing, the spinners all take to the wing around the same time in late afternoon, often forming clouds among the bankside trees. They all have one final urgent purpose, to breed. Mating takes place on the wing, but often preoccupied couples can be seen making unscheduled landings. For the males, the story ends here. But for the female, there is one more challenge. Carrying anything up to 8,000 eggs, she must return to the water. Female spinners can be seen dancing over the water, dipping down to release eggs at the water's surface. Those that linger too long often end up victims of awaiting trout. Sometimes the fish can be so preoccupied with these spinners, they will make spectacular leaps in anticipation of a protein-rich meal. A lucky few may fall prey to a more charitable predator on the banks of the Y. The river keeper on his stretch of the river captures returning females and collects their eggs. As part of a repopulation program, the eggs are placed on protective glass sheets suspended in the river, ensuring much higher survival rates for the next generation of mayfly. With completely depleted energy reserves, the female lay spent and dying on the water. Two years in the making, for what seems like just a few moments of glory, the mayfly's life is complete. <laughs>